Hey, for now, fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports. Today, let's answer some subscriber mailbag questions. We put out a mailbag call on the community chat of our 49ers YouTube channel here, and you guys responded with a bunch of really good questions. So we'll just jump right into it and try and get you guys questions answered. So we're going to go with, uh, let's go Al George. He says, the results of Jimmy getting hurt was simply long bench time in New England. He's now battle-hardened and ready to go. He's a winner, and we all know it and has, has witnessed it. Let's stop the rumors and let the man play. I understand that. I understand the frustration because obviously it's just a Jimmy Garoppolo fan and he wants Garoppolo to be the guy, but I don't think we can just ignore the uh, the injury history. Like, Jimmy Garoppolo's injury history is real. Like, it's it's a real reality. He barely played last year because he was injured. Again, is that Jimmy Garoppolo's fault? Is he some sort of, you know, injury-prone quarterback? No, I don't think so. And he proved that two years ago whenever he was healthy the entire season and took the 49ers to a Super Bowl. Now, I do agree that... We've all witnessed him win. I think he's a winner. I think he's going to be the starting quarterback in 2021. I think all the rumors that we bring here on the 49ers report is simply, hey, there's a chance that they can get Deshaun Watson. We'll discuss what that would look like. And I, of course, said I'm fine with Deshaun Watson, but I, of course, have also said he's too expensive, and I don't want to give up to Sun, Moon, Stars. I'm fine with Jimmy Garoppolo being the quarterback instead of Watson if it saves them draft picks and, of course, money going forward. But I think you were correct, Al, in saying he's a winner, and we all know it, so the rumors need to stop. But I think you're also incorrect in saying that he, you know, is this perfectly never-injured quarterback because, like, if he gets injured in 2021 again and they don't have a good backup option, then the Niners are going to have a repeat of what happened in 2020 despite the fact they have a roster that is ready to win right now. So I get the frustration on the Garoppolo stuff, but guess what? And especially with the news that there's like, they actually did call about Teddy Bridgewater and they actually did, you know, call about Matt Stafford. And so we got to cover when there are reports and rumors that's what we do here on the 49ers Report. What do you guys think? You guys tired of talking about Jimmy Garoppolo? Like, are you actually tired? Because I don't think you are. So type N down below for no, or if you're not tired, type N down below for no as well. See what I did there? Like, we're not tired of this. Come on. This is what we live for, right? News and rumors on the quarterback spot. It's been the offseason of the century for the 49ers, and we've been covering it all the way. So, so let's stop with the one. Like, debating Garoppolo is fun. It's fun, and we do it here on the channel. All right, let's jump into Frank, who says, do you believe Teddy Bridgewater would be a great backup for the 49ers? No, I don't think so. And, no, they, and, they, and they can't afford him either. They can't afford Garoppolo and Teddy Bridgewater. They'd have to go with one or the other. But my big problem is, is, like, do people really want a quarterback battle? Like, do you really want to have an open quarterback competition going into 2021, thereby creating more controversy if the potential winner of the quarterback battle ends up struggling during the NFL season? Like, all quarterbacks struggle. All quarterbacks have bad games. And if you have a quarterback battle or quarterback controversy, and you have a guy sitting on the bench ready to take over the reins, you create a sort of scenario where week four, Garoppolo struggles, and it's like, oh, well, put in Alex Smith. Oh, well, put in Teddy Bridgewater. So... I don't want a quarterback battle, personally. Some people, I guess, do, but I, uh, I, I'm i out on that. Pick a quarterback, stick with that quarterback, and if it's Garoppolo, great. If it's not, then get somebody else. But in terms of Bridgewater and Garoppolo together, we talked about that this week. Like, the money doesn't work out. They can't afford both. Uh, Sergeant H, USMC, a Marine. Maybe. I mean, you never know on YouTube. But he says, why do people always go to Jimmy's 22-9 and record to defend him? How about the 23 games he has missed? Oh, this is a different Garoppolo guy. Uh, you're paying a guy to sit on the bench while you let cornerstone players walk at free agency. The Niners should also get Shanahan out of the building. Goodness gracious, before he goes after Cousins. Um, okay, well, you had me there. It's like, you, you know, you almost got me in the first half. And then, okay, okay, so... Yes, Garoppolo's injury history is real. We just, we just talked about that. That's a real thing. It's a real concern. However, um, I don't know what cornerstone players they're going to wa let walk in free agency. Is, is Richard Sherman a cornerstone player? He might have been the past couple of years, but going forward, is he a cornerstone player? I mean, he got probably two, two good years left, but he's not a cornerstone player. Nick Bose is a cornerstone player. Fred Warner is a cornerstone player. In terms of getting Kyle Shanahan out of the building, you do realize the 49ers' main success is due to the fact that Kyle Shanahan's a great head coach. And I would argue they're probably... Maybe five teams that wouldn't want to upgrade to Kyle Shanahan right now, and the rest of the you know 25 plus NFL uh, jobs right now would love to have Kyle Shanahan over the the current coach that they have. A lot of them would. So, and plus this whole Kirk Cousins thing we talked about months ago, like they're not going to get Kirk Cousins. We talked about that. Like Kirk Cousins is he's going to stay a Viking. So, a lot of anger there. But I I I, I don't like it. That second half of that question overall. Again, make sure you guys are subscribed. We do live mailbag videos almost every single week here on the channel. So if you guys subscribe, then you're notified when the mailbag video happens, and therefore you're able to ask more questions like these ones. So these are all subscriber questions, and so that's why you need to be subscribed here to the 49ers Report as we approach 35,000 subscribers. Like, we're an, we're, we're an army of 49er fans here on the 49ers Report, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. But if you're new, subscribe and join the army. Welcome to the club. Um, Al says... 
as we'll go ahead and get, you know, one more here from Allie. Two, two questions. Josh would be a great backup. Let's remember he's young and will develop. We're set at the quarterback position. I would agree with that. Like, I like the idea of Josh Rosen being a backup quarterback. I have no issues with Josh Rosen being the backup. I think he can be a backup. I have the issue where it's like Josh Rosen should be an open quarterback competition with Jimmy Garoppolo. I remember uh, someone in Grant Cohen suggested that a couple of weeks ago. He's like, Josh Rosen should start because he's better. And it's like, no, he's not. He's barely been able to be a practice squad quarterback. He's not better. So, no, don't compete. But backup quarterback, fine. I think he's going to compete with Josh Johnson. I'm fine with either one of those guys being the backup quarterback. I Again, I don't hate Josh Rosen. I think it's a good idea to have him as the backup quarterback. But this idea that he's going to, like, you know, be competitive when he has been not competitive for his entire career is a little ridiculous. Big Dub says, would you consider a wide receiver at 12 if one were to fall? No. No, I wouldn't. Now, if it's Smith or Jamar Chase, it'd be tough because I think those guys are superstars, but wide receiver is the least of the 49ers' needs. Like, you, you go through the entire uh, position group right now. Like, do they need a defensive end more than wide receiver. They need an offensive lineman more than wide receiver. They need a cornerback more than wide receiver. They need a safety more than wide receiver. The only positions that are in better shape right now than wide receiver are probably uh, linebacker, I would say, and running back. And even then, it's like those two are, are pretty much set, and they're set in stone. Like, wide receiver at 12 just wouldn't make sense. If, if they were to fall, I would look for somebody to trade up to 12 who would come up from, like, the teens and the late teens and then move back a little bit more. I think i get corner. I think i got maybe offensive lineman, of course, if Trent Williams leaves. Wide receiver is just it's just not that big of a need. I would rather get defensive end and cornerback as being bigger needs overall for our 49ers. What do you guys think? What's the biggest need right now? Is it defensive end or cornerback? Some, something else? Let me know what you guys think. DE down below for defensive end. Type CB down below for cornerback. Okay. There is still going on this great sale for some St. Patty's Day gear. Are you tired of getting pinched on St. Patrick's Day because you want to rep the 49ers, but they don't have green in their colors? We got you guys covered right here. For a limited time, some of it's on sale. Chatsports.com forward slash 49 green is the link to go. It's down below me right here on the screen and also down below in the description box. Like I can see it way down there. Click that and then check out all of the different great t-shirts for both men and women. They have hoodies. They have long sleeves. They have socks. All green, but all also with the 49ers on them. That way you can rep the team and also look good for your St. Patrick's Patrick's Day affairs, whatever you guys have going on. Again, limited stock. They're running out because people like them. And, of course, they are still on sale. So, chatsports.com forward slash 49 green. Most of them are still on sale. All right, John says, draft Travis, e draft Travis Etienne in the second round? Hmm. Let me think about that. No. I don't know. Okay, so here's the deal. E e Etienne's draft stock has slipped a little bit because he didn't have a very great 2020. But I still think he's one of the best running backs in this class behind Najee Harris. It might even be the best running back in this class. I'd love him to be paired alongside, um, of course, uh, I'm blanking right now, but the starting running back for the San Francisco 49ers, Raheem Mostert, thank you, brain, figure it out. I'd be fine with it, but it's just not that big of a need. Like I just said, it's just not, that, just, not, just not a big need, right? So you can draft best player available and draft upon all the skill players that you want, but you'll still have a hole at cornerback. You might still have a hole at offensive line. You might still have a hole at defensive end. Get the needs first. This is a team that's ready to win right now. And so you just plug a couple of holes, like little holes too, like plug a hole here, plug a hole there, and boom, this team is ready to go ahead and win right now. So I wouldn't hate it. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the entire world, but at the same time, it's like, how big of a knee when you just re-signed Raheem Mostert last year, you re-signed Jeff Wilson Jr. this year, and then you drafted Michael Hasty, who's going to be your third running back. Like, like, where does ETN fit into that? I, 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 I'll, I'll be out on that, even though I do like him and Najee Harris. I think they're great, and I would take them late first round, early second round, if I needed a running back, but they don't. Um, Sam Screws says, Does the, do the Cardinals scare you after signing J.J. Watt? Do the Cardinals scare me, but it's not because of J.J. Watt. How about that? Like, I think J.J. Watt's fine, but they gave him a ton of money for a guy who has not been this elite pass rusher in a long time. Like, I like J.J. Watt. I think he's a great guy. I think he's a great player. I'd like him to be my teammate on, on, on the football team. But, I mean, people were asking if the Niners should sign him, and it's like, goodness gracious, like, he is way too expensive. And sure enough, he got like $23 million. Like, that's just so much money for a guy who has not had double-digit sacks in a while. The Cardinals, though, are a different story. And let me ask you guys this, though. The 49ers will finish blank in the NFC West. Like, question time. Even with the, uh, the, the the signing of, uh, of, of, of J.J. Watt, where do you think the 49ers will finish in the NFC West? Is it, you know, first? I hope it's first. Is it second? Is it third? Is it fourth? I want to see you guys' NFC West rankings down below right now in the comments section. I would say right now I'd go 49ers, 
Rams, Seahawks, Cardinals. But, like, the Cardinals do scare me. I mean, the Cardinals are a good football team. This is a great division. DeAndre Hopkins, they obviously have, uh, we're trying to retool the offensive line. Kyler Murray, they have Chandler Jones coming back alongside J.J. Watt. That's going to be scary. They need to get a cornerback, and they need some defensive help. So it's not like they're a complete football team. But Watt doesn't put them over the edge. I think Watt just adds to what is a good roster overall and can be a competitive roster and can be a roster that can honestly compete and battle with the 49ers like the rest of the NFC. Like, the rest of the NFC West is still really good. I mean, I think the Seattle Seahawks are going to obviously keep uh, Russell Wilson, and they will still be very competitive as they were this past year. And then as we continue to look at the guys like the LA Rams, the brand-new quarterback, and what seemingly is an always very good defense, and then you have our 49ers sitting there, and it's like, well, if we get our quarterback situation figured out, Garoppolo or not, and then draft some uh, good players to fill the holes, I think we're going to be competitive as well. So, the West is the West is brutal. The West is hard, but the West did not get that much better with JJ Watt in it. Like the West was already good pre JJ Watt, and it just gets a little more interesting just from a, a an All Star big name guy like Watt coming over to the Arizona Cardinals. I, I'm fascinated that he did pick Arizona. Like I'm very very interested that he did pick, pick Arizona over the rest of the teams because apparently other teams were offering him money, and he said no. I want to play with the Cardinals. So. Maybe it's like, a, I want to live in Arizona because Arizona's not a nice place to live. I don't know. There you go. Also, my up for today here on the 49ers Report. Again, make sure you guys subscribe to the 49ers channel here as we try and give you guys the latest up-to-date news, rumors, mailbags, live Q&A, draft coverage. I mean, we are all over it here on the channel, so make sure you guys do subscribe. Also, my up for today here on the 49ers Report. I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.